What's up guys, my name is Álvaro Moreira from Particle School and in this tutorial I'll show you how to create a scene similar to this one here where you get some rain on a puddle and you can find a lot of rain tutorials around the internet but none of it shows how to create rain, raindrops on a puddle and you know that when it's raining there is always a puddle and you can always use this same setup to to make it rain on a pool or something so on let me show you here on 3ds max um on the first part of tutorial i'll show you how to model these raindrops here and it's very very simple and as you can see it just lasts a few frames in this case eight frames and then the rings uh if you're doing if you if you look at real rain this stuff here happens real fast, like if maybe one or two or three frames. So I think eight's enough and looks great. So let's see how to model this first and then let's create a setup on particle flow. So here in the first part of the tutorial, I'll show you how to model and animate these droplets, this orange one here and with the rings. So let's get started. I'll open the advanced rain starting scene. Here you have only the water and the, and the street, as you can see here with a camera. So that's the camera view. And let's create a cylinder to begin. I'll show you how to model it very fast. So let's create a cylinder here. And then we can define the size of it. So, it, so we can check here on this view. I think one here and five here, maybe six. Yes, six, it looks fine. Now I'll press Alt Q and press P to go to the perspective mode. Alt Q to isolate this selection. Press it to zoom. And here, those parameters looks fine. Uh, six, six sides, four height segments and no, just one cap segment. Now let's convert it to editable poly and let's call it droplet. So first of all, let's delete this bottom face here. And on front view, I will decrease, uh, shrink this one. And I will grow this one here and maybe shrink this one here as well. Yeah, let's make this one a bit bigger and bring it down. Cool. Now let's apply a digital uh, Ruby Smooth. Yeah, it looks fine like this. Mm, let's use a Geosphere. Uh, here on top view, I'll press F3 and make it like this size looks fine. Press F3 again. It looks okay like this. In this juice sphere, it have two sides. Let's see if one, yeah, two sides and it's an octa. Okay, now let's model a crown and let's use a tube to model it. So I'll get the tube and here. And this height is okay. So I'm using just 12, uh, 14 sides here and no height caps and no cap segments. Now let's press Alt A to align it. No, in fact, we, we don't have to do it. Let's bring it to the side here and I'll convert it to editable poly. And on front view, I'll select just the bottom edges here and I'll delete it. The bottom, bottom faces, in fact. Now, Mm, let's make it a bit sm uh, smaller size here and now let's select like one face try not to move it so get this select tool here and also press key to get that tool and let's add uh, an extrude here so I just got uh, another face here by mistake Let's make it smaller. Let's check it on front view. Try to make the same height of this one. 
and I'll press one to select the vertex and bring this one down a little bit. And now let's select only those faces here, the out faces of the, the extruded uh, faces. And on top of view, let's shrink it with the scale tool and make sure you're selecting the use pivot center here. Now you can shrink it just to make the faces a bit more squarey. Now let's select one of them and make it real, re really, really low. And let's just make it different heights. Looks okay like this. And let's apply a turbo smooth to see how it looks like. Mm, okay, let's call it crown. So let's select those, the top ones here. Try not to move it, so press Q to get that one. And now let's just, with the scale tool and this one here, center, use selection center, let's scale on X and Z. So it goes a little bit that way. And let's select this border here and I uh, scale it a bit in the inner one here. Let's scale down. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, it's looking okay. And to make it look a bit better, just select the, the, the taller ones here, like this one, this one, just those edges. You can also select one and press ring. And let's create a connection here. And now this connection, let's decrease the size of it using this center one here. And use pivot point center and decrease it. Now the turbo smooth should look fine. Let's see, it looks, it's a really cool crown. Now let's animate it. So on first frame, we want it, we want it to be, the Z axis, we want it to be zero. So, Let's, I'll show you a, a trick here. On any frame, just bring it down with the auto key on. You can press N to make it on. And let's look on front of you, make it really flat. Okay, and now you can invert this select, this, those keys here. So I'll bring this one to five and this other one to zero. Uh, eight frames, it's a really good time for this animation because it's really fast. So here on frame eight, you bring down, you bring the zero one. So this one, it looks cool this way. And here on frame zero, just shrink it on uh, Y and X axis. And then it will grow to five and on 10, it can grow a little bit more. Cool. Now here, this one, Let's do the same on the Y axis. Let's make it really flat. And just bring the zero one to frame five, the second one to frame zero. And then the first one, just uh, shift click here, hold shift and drag it to frame eight. Cool. And now this is here. You can bring it up on frame five till here and on frame zero, just you can bring it up a lot like this. I think it's fine. And on frame zero, just bring it uh, below the grid line here. And then on frame, mm, let's make it on frame eight. So yeah, it can go a little bit lower than the drop. Okay, great. Now we have to do some other stuff here. Yeah, it looks cool. So here, this one, we don't want it to make to stay like this forever. So let's make it disappear on frame now frame nine, just uh, shrinking it down with the scale tool to zero. So right click on the spinner. And see, it looks Fine. And the same for this one here on frame at nine, bring down to zero, but yeah, it looks okay. And the same for this 
geosphere here on frame 14. Bring it down to zero, but now check it out. It's shrinking over the time. So on frame 13, bring it back to 100. And on frame 14, it's on zero. So cool. Looks fine like this. Now let's create the rings. The rings is really easy. Just you can make it with uh, torus. Mm, let's create uh, torus around here. You can't make it really slow in the beginning, so just make a bigger one and align it to the x and y axis. Just press. To do it, you press Alt A and click on the object that you want to align. Press OK. And now let's select it all and make a selection here. Uh, droplets. And let's exit the isolation select tool. Now on the on our camera view, we can check if the size is fine. So I'll select the the ring and hide the grid. Yeah, it's really big. But we can decrease it. So let's shrink down. It's very important to keep the pivot on the base of the object. And the same for this one. Let's select the no. Um, you can press minus and plus to shrink down the this gizmo. And then see now it was in there. So I will like this, okay. Okay, the size is fine. Now here this this ring here. Uh I think we can make it three here and uh that's twenty-five looks so the maximum size of it will be twenty-five. I'm defining it now and I think it's okay. And just press some Ctrl Z to bring the camera back to its original position. Ctrl Z to deselect it. Mm. Now let's select our droplets here and press Alt Q again. Uh, press P to go to the perspective mode. And let's check the parameters of the, the stars here. So 10 sides, I think it's not enough. Yeah, let's make it 12. So it gets a really round shape here. And try to keep it this really round like this, but try to optimize the segments. And don't use too much because your particle flow system will take really slow. So like 24, 25, it's too, too low, but 34 looks fine. And now let's animate those parameters. So I know that in 30 frames, uh, it's one second and it's a good time to make it grow. So let's bring it down to zero on frame one. I know that 25 is a good number and on, third, on frame 30, I'll bring it to 25. Now I want it to have a radius of zero on the 30. So it disappears. Now check it out. But I don't want it to be like this here. So I will uh, switch on the auto key again and bring this radius to zero on the first frame. And here I'll bring it to zero three again. And now I have this kind of animation. Uh, so we can reduce the polygons of this. So if you look here on front view, the pivot point is on the center and all of those mesh here, half, uh, bottom half will be hidden under the water. So we don't need it. And so let's apply a edit poly modifier here on top of the torus. Don't convert it to editable poly, otherwise it loses the animation. And let's select, select uh, the half bottom here and delete it. Uh, check it out. Cool. Now, something else that we can do to make the transition smoother 
from the water to the ring is select this border here and increase it. No animation, just like this. And this inner border here, decrease the size. Now if you look on front view, it's really, it's a bit smoother. And let's see how, how, how it is now. So if you, if you, now, now we have this mesh on the first frame. So I will get the, the scale tool and I will decrease it to zero on the first frame and make it 100 on the second one, frame one. In fact, you can make it 100 around frame 5. So I will drag this one here. Mm -hmm. It looks okay now. And on frame 30, we still have some mesh. So on frame 31, let's decrease it to 0 again. But on frame 30, we have to bring it back to 100. Cool. Now that's what we have. But it's kind of... Uh, the curve animation of this ring is not good because it's stopping to the end and we want to make it linear. So just select it all and click here. Set tangents to linear. If it's not selected here, you can find the torus and get the scale and select it all and then make it linear. Uh, in fact, we have to change the Taurus animation as well. So I'll select Modify, Taurus, and we have those two radius here. I'll select it all and set the tangent to linear. See, much better now. Okay, now let's select this Taurus and press Ctrl V to make a copy of it. Taurus 2. And now just make a copy, not a, not an instance. And I'll get these keys and bring it five frames later. I think it looks okay like this. Yeah. Now let's copy those two rings here. I'll uh, shift drag it to the side. Put it here. Let's align it, in fact, to this object. And see, it looks really cool. Now, if you want, you can make a 31 from both of them. Just copy it. I'll not do it now. Now let's group it. So I'll select all of them. Just make sure you select all of them. And of the crown. And let's call it PF brown okay i don't know i kind of delete it so let's call it oh yeah the, the group's fine here okay and this one let's select it all bring to front select the other ring and let's call it yeah drop and let's change its colors so this one can be blue and this one can be purple. And let's create a raindrop as well. It's with a geosphere. Um let's base on the size of this stuff here. So I'll delete this one and I'll put one here on the center like this. I'll bring it up on front view. I will uh Let's use the octal with two segments, convert it to digital poly, select the first vertex here, and with the soft selection, select it again. I'll decrease the fall off so we don't get this part here. And I'll bring it up like this. Let's see. Looks okay. Let's make it a bit thinner. Smaller. Let's call it PF Raindrop. 
Cool. Now that we have all of this, we can start our particle flow source.